Hey everybody, Juan here. Welcome back to the channel. For this video, we are going to be taking our second look at the PlayStation Now service available on the PlayStation 4 and the PC. To sum it up, PlayStation Now is a service that allows you to stream and download games for the PlayStation 2 and the PS4, and for that PlayStation 3 library, you can stream that on your PS4 and your PC, but you cannot download those games. But it is a solid service when you think about the fact that you don't have to directly download the games and have it take up all that space on your hard drive. If you don't like a game, you can quickly back out and try another game. And this has gone under multiple changes, not just in its user interface, but also in price as well, because originally it was $19.99. And at that point in time, I reviewed it about a year ago, I thought that it had potential. It's definitely got a beefy library, but now they chopped that price down to $9.99 a month, $24.99 every three months. And if you want to lump all of that up and pay just one time a year at $59.99, it's honestly not a bad deal at all. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is checking out a couple of the games. We're going to stream them because that's maybe the long-term appeal. Eventually, this is going to be available in Android devices. And the fact that you can play games like God of War, a PS4 exclusive on your PC via streaming service, that is quite fascinating. But for this video, I am going to be using my PlayStation 4 Pro plugged directly via Ethernet cable. So that way we have the best connection possible. I have a 150 megabit download connection and 15 up. It is the exact same speed that I had with my previous video that I did in December of last year. So we're going to take a look and ultimately answer the question, is PlayStation now worth it? Let's talk about that. But before we begin, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit on that notifications bell and check out my Xbox Game Pass video after this one in case you're contemplating subscribing to that service as well. There is a seven day trial of PlayStation Now. That's actually what I'm using right now in my account. So you can try it out for yourself and see if your connection is able to handle it. But this is the user interface. It went through multiple changes ever since I worked on this video. And right off the bat, I think it is one of the best options out there. You see that it tells you what's hot. You see you have God of War, Grand Theft Auto 5, Uncharted 4. Some of these are only available until the beginning of 2020. They're doing this as an incentive. And much like Netflix, and you see this is definitely inspired by Netflix, it does suggest games based on other things that you've uh, viewed, you've browsed upon. So you have a bunch of PlayStation hits. You see on the upper left side of the screen, it tells you if it is the PS3, the PS2, or the PS4 version of a game. When you go to the main page, you see recently added, I played Heavenly Sword, a PS3 game. So it's suggesting uh, other games like it, kinda, maybe. But then you have collections and these are based on different genres. On the upper right side of the screen, it gives you a preview. So that's really, really good. And we're gonna take a closer look at the collections a little while later, but I do wanna jump immediately into the action. So let's say that because you have hundreds upon hundreds of video games and you wanna be able to not have to browse each and every time, when you have a game that you wanna play, you go to your games because you can add games to a specific list. And I already figured out, okay, so what I wanna try out, we are gonna play one downloadable game, but everything else, I want it to be streamed because I think it's the, the biggest question, the biggest concern. In the previous video, I played Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, and I thought it ran surprisingly well. So this time I wanna try another Street Fighter game and go to Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix. Whew, that's available on the PS3, and much like the previous video, I don't wanna jump cut this part because I want you to be able to see what happens when you go into a game. How long does it take to not only get into a game, but back out. And I have played PlayStation Now on my computer. All I did was plug in my PS4 controller. I believe you can also plug in a PS3 controller as well. As you can see on screen, trophies do function. So this is, imagine that this is a PS4 or a PS3 or even kind of a PS2 with the HD upscaling uh, games that they have available, but it is fully functional. So your saves, it doesn't matter if you bought a game physically at some point, if the digital version used the same save, when you go into PlayStation Now, when you go do all of that, it is still gonna work. So I have had games that 
I traded in years ago, but I still had the save file. I went into PlayStation Now, and that save file was still functional. As you can see on the upper right side of the screen, because this is a PS4 game, it's treating my PlayStation 4 as a PlayStation 3. And holy crap, that volume is high. Let's lower that right now. You're watching this on YouTube, which by default is gonna have a lot of compression particles. This streams at about 720p, and the, the quality varies on your connection, but right off the bat, I can see some compression particles. When you play games on the PS3, very important, let's switch over to the camera. Start and select are not these buttons. You actually got to use the touchpad. So in order for me to press start, I got to hit this little corner here. I do got to point out, I am in no way a Street Fighter expert. I'm just a fan of the game. So let's do right, left, right, left, right, left, down, up, down, up. Just to give you an idea, the moment that I said the word, that's when I pressed the button on screen. So um, I'm afraid because last time Street Fighter Third Strike, it was okay. It was okay. But uh, Pac-Man, which was the other game that I tried, that wasn't exactly all that great. So let, let's try this out. Okay, so I can I can do the attacks, but there is definitely a, a delay in when I jump. I feel like it's more obvious. Because if you're trying to do a Hadouken or something and you're, you're getting spammy, I think eventually you're not going to notice there's a delay, but jump, jump, jump. Yeah, there, there's a, a delay there. And, and it does get annoying. Wow, I'm being destroyed. Okay, so, once again, we are here to review the PlayStation Now service. The delay was noticeable, especially when you jump. I'm feeling kind of like Ken right now. He's a little bit sad. Let's, let's just count it down. Ken, Ken, are you happy with the performance? Let's say you want to go back and switch to another game. You don't have to go to your PS4. You hit the PS Now button or the, the PlayStation button. And you see it's gonna give you a different screen from the one that you're used to. So you can hit Browse Games or you can close the game. I'm gonna try something because last time in the previous video that I did for PS Now, even after I hit Close Game, it re-asked me to close the previous session when I went into a new game, which did not make sense to me but another game that I want to try out because I have this game. I have this game on my PS3. I have played it on Xbox Game Pass. I beat it on Xbox Game Pass and I've not played the version on PS Now. This is Double Dragon Neon. When this game first came out, it received a lot of mixed responses and I'm not sure why because I thought it was really fun. But as you can see, even though I hit close game, it still closes my previous game session. I'm assuming it sort of keeps a cache of your previous game, just in case you want to quickly go right back into it. And, and maybe that's the thing. But don't expect to get the service and, and thinking that you're going to be into the game in five seconds. I think th this takes approximately 30 to 40 seconds, maybe even a minute. But even then, think about the fact that you're not downloading the game and I don't think that it is any slower if you use a PlayStation 4, a standard one. Once again, I'm using this as a, this is a PS4 Pro outputting in 1080p to my computer, to my television, and this is being streamed at, I believe, 720p. But we're back on a PS3. You see it does say signed in, or, well, you would see it if my camera was actually not covering it, but this game has a lot of style. And uh, I think whenever it fades, and once again, I know it's gonna be very difficult for you to see, you see those compression particles. You know, when you watch a YouTube video that was just uploaded, that it's still not the full quality? It's kind of like that. And th that is a little annoying because that's the gameplay experience. Now, if you have fiber, there's a lot of people out there that have gigabit connections and things like that. Maybe it's gonna be freaking awesome. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. It's okay. This is a challenging game. I died a ton playing this game. And it does have combos, although we're only going to be playing the beginning part. So maybe it's not that noticeable. But when the camera moves, it is, it is absolutely noticeable that it is a, a streaming service. So something I can say right now, just to not be repetitious, is that this is an excellent complimentary service. 
Maybe you never owned a PS3 or an Xbox 360, and you never played this game. It's actually passable right now. But let's say you, you've never played this game. It's like, hey, you get to play it 30, 40 minutes, as I said in the previous video. If a friend comes over, you have an insane library, and we're going to be taking a look at that. That's one of the biggest things that people talk about when they compare this to Xbox Game Pass, which is the the amount of games in this service is insane. Because this has hundreds upon hundreds of different games. Where Game Pass, I do think Microsoft has more of a, a quality over quantity approach, which personally I prefer. Because I've beaten multiple games, including this one, using that service. And this one, most of the games that I see in the library are from the PS3 and the PS4. See, so things like this are important. This game does have counter mechanics that you have to hit this at a very specific moment. So I was actually able to do that because it gives you a damage buff if you counter. So let's purposely try to get hit again and see if I can counter that. There is a delay, but I'm not going to say it's like this game-breaking delay that I'm going to hate and not stand. I think it's serviceable. When I played Motor Storm Apocalypse on the PS3, I played that using Wi-Fi because I think a lot of people are going to be using Wi-Fi. Say you have this in the living room. Like right now, my, my wife, I'm not sure what she's doing in her computer, but she's browsing. She could be watching Netflix. And that's going to be happening in your home. Like imagine a scenario where you have PS Now and it's like, people, I'm going to play video games so you can't browse, you can't do YouTube. Like that's not exactly the way to go, right? So this has been Double Dragon Neon. I'm not going to hit close game because I want to see what happens. You saw what happened before where it still had to reclose the game. So now we're going to go back to your games. Something I appreciate is the fluidity of all of this. Something else I forgot to show is that you see there's an actual download history of the PS Now games that you've downloaded. And it tells you the file size right there. So 3.75 for Umbrella Core. I know it's a bad game. I haven't played it, but I downloaded it literally just to see how bad it is. We're going to try out Dirt Rally. And uh, this is once again a PS4 game. You see that because I have not downloaded it, at the bottom, it tells you the file size. It gives you the option to download the game or stream now. Are you getting PS Now? Because, but spoilers, it is worth it. Come on, 60 bucks a year. This, this does not replace, in my opinion, buying games day one. Xbox Game Pass does have a huge benefit in that because you have a lot of developers and publishers under the Microsoft umbrella, you're getting games like Outer Wilds day one on Xbox Game Pass for PC. You're not gonna have that luxury with Sony, but I do think this is an excellent secondary alternative. You spend $60 for one year. Say you beat just one of those games, just one of those games. That's already worth it. So here we are about to race on Dirt Rally for the PS4 and first impressions before we even get to the race, same thing here. You do have those compression particles and I think that's, that's still gonna be an issue uh, for the foreseeable future. And, and I would imagine that is regardless of your connection. I think that I'm willing to uh, cope with that as long as the delay becomes better as time goes by. Here we go. Right, left, left, oof. Oof, this is rough. Recover vehicle, okay. I'm trying, I am trying right now. There is like that tiny delay that just makes you think, hey, just just in case, hit that trigger again to the right or to the left. But remember, you can download the games on the PS4. So let's say you want to subscribe because you don't care about streaming games. You just want to play the, the PlayStation 4 library that is that is available. You want to play the PlayStation 2 games that they do have as an option. There's not a ton of them. It's not even 30, I think. No, there are hundreds of games on PlayStation now, so it's impossible to cover all of them in this video. But just in case, here's a highlight reel of other games running on PS Now. Round one, fight.
one guy. I'm only here because of men like you. I look forward to fighting many more battles by your side. Come on, what are you waiting for? Let's get this fight started. Right? You okay? Nelson, what was that? I gotta get that thing off you. You just... I gotta get you out! Oh, dear God. No, no, no! The last game I'm going to showcase is Bubsy, The Wooly Strikes Back. It is a bad game. You are already streaming a game. Huh? What? Here's the interesting thing. I clearly hit... Okay, I'm going to go back. We're going to do a double take on this. You saw I clearly hit play download. Interesting. It carries an instance of a game, whether it be downloaded or streamed. I just found out about that live, so the more you know. But you may be able to notice something because even though this is an ugly as hell game, and sadly I don't think it's on purpose, but you can see it looks clean. Let me just go up and down right now. It looks clean, whereas Dirt Rally, even Street Fighter, which I mean, Street Fighter is hand-drawn, so you wanna talk about clean animation or clean looking game, that that's the definition of it, but it had those compression particles. So if you're somebody that really loves visual fidelity in video games, that could be an absolute deal breaker. And yes, in this game, because you're a cat, you collect a bunch of yarn. It is literally all over the place. But here's the thing. I would have never, ever paid a single dollar to play this game. But I was able to play it thanks to PlayStation Now. And I think that's something that you gotta keep asking yourself, right? Like. How many games am I going to be able to experience that I otherwise would not if I subscribed to the PlayStation Now service? I do live in Puerto Rico. I do got to point that out. So I think I'm naturally going to be in some kind of disadvantage just because of the location and the uh, distance between where I am and wherever Sony has these services, you know, the, the servers for these services, a lot of S's. But you got to think about where you live you know, how stable your connection is. This has been Bubsy. It is not fun, at least in my personal opinion. Now, one of my favorite things about PlayStation Now has to be how they present the games. I've already shown you the home screen and the Your Games page, but in addition to that, they have a ton of different ways of categorizing games based on genre, look, feel. So if you want crime, open world, bullet hell shooters, platformers, PlayStation 3 games, PS4 games, games that are downloadable only, they divide this in a way that does make it easier for that person that's getting the service for the first time. They can go in here and get a game of their choosing, or if they just like a particular genre, they can just go there and not have to worry about the rest. Now, even though I love how they lay this out, I do have a couple of complaints. The main one being, even though they have the PlayStation exclusive section, you can't divide that by console. And that's a problem because once again, you can only download PS2 and PS4 games. You can't do that with PlayStation 3. So here, you can be all up like, yes, finally, look at all these games that I can download. Oh, wait, wait, what? I can only download a few? I can only stream others? and that does become a challenge. So always look at the top side of the screen so you can know if you can download the game or not. If you only love open world games, you go in here, you experience those, and you're good to go. Which leads to the final question, people. Is PlayStation Now, now that it's dropped to $9.99 a month, $24.99 for three months, or $59.99 a year, is it worth it? Without question, yes. Are there things that I would love to see improved? Absolutely. I'm curious, now that we know that we're gonna get the PS5 in holiday 2020, how are they gonna transition? And if there's any way they can show some love to the PlayStation 3 library, are they gonna make that downloadable? Personally, I don't think that's gonna be happening because of all the problems. Cell processor, Sony has stated it's, it's just hard to work on stuff for the PS3 for future consoles, but I think it's worth it. I think that it allows you to fully experience many games that you otherwise may, may have never played. And people like myself, it's like, I love to play a bunch of games at one time. I'm not a gamer that just plays one game. And until I'm done, I'm not touching any other game. I love the fact that I'm gonna play 30 minutes of this game. 
going to play 20 minutes of this other one. And there is another scenario that I've not brought up, which is say you're curious about a specific PS4 game. You can stream it, see if you like it, and if it's for you, then you can download it. You don't have to spend like I've done with a Game Pass on Xbox, which is sometimes I download 40 gigabytes, 30 gigabytes worth of a video game. I play it for 10 minutes, realize it's not for me, and I go like, damn, I spent, I wasted space, I wasted bandwidth, and most of all, I wasted time. So if you've played PlayStation Now, let me know what you think about it, or maybe, and here's the, the real key question, now that they have dropped the price, now that you've gotten a better look at this, do you think it's the best time to jump into this for the first time? Let me know in the comments section, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, hit on that notifications bell, and go to the comments section, and let me know what your other subscription-based services that you're either concerned about, you would like me to talk about, you have EA, you have uh, Origin, you have uh, Ubisoft that's going to be doing their subscription service for PC. So it seems like we're going to have to make way like a hundred bucks a month between now, Game Pass, Stadia when that comes out. Whenever anything comes out now, everything is a subscription model, but that's a topic for another day. So up until next time, thank you for watching and supporting and take care everybody.